hello. This is Cheryl. This is the Pursuing the Pursuer Facebook page and the Times Have Changed YouTube channel. And we are on the part two of the Elul series, talking about the, the month of Elul on the Jewish calendar. And I have at least one, I think just the one other um, <clears throat> scripture passage to read. You know, just in reflection, we had just read through Psalms 27. And we just read through Haggai chapter 1. We just discussed about the consider your ways and even the Lord's warning about um, paying attention to whether you're spending more time building your own life, building your own house, so to speak, and leaving his house and his kingdom in ruins. How that, in several places in scripture, he was always reminding the Israelites not to forget him when they came into the promises that the Lord brought for them. And, you know, the Psalm 27, that was, that was reflective of David really kind of making the Lord the priority. This this month is, is kind of like a, a come and be with me, like the Holy Spirit is drawing us to come and be with the Lord, to come and spend one-on-one -on -one time with Him, to come and get away. And it does get, it does get a little bit, um, In the Song of Solomon, or the Song of Songs scripture, it does kind of go over that again. Because we had just mentioned that uh, the month of Elul, it, it also represents the, the romance between the Bride of Christ and the Bridegroom Christ. Concerning the, the chapter 2 scriptures, I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. And that is said in the Hebrew... Ani Lidoti Vidoti Li. And so, um, I know I've mentioned this before on the Facebook page, and I have even sung it before on the Facebook page. Um, I don't know, I might try to sing it. <laughs> I might try to sing it sometime after I kind of go back over the lyrics. Um, There is a song by Joshua Aaron, the Messianic Jewish worshiper, called Ani Lidoti Vidoti Li. Um, and I will, I will do my best to remember to either share it on the page, on the Facebook page, and, and uh, include the link in the description on the YouTube channel so that you can listen to that song. Um... But I'm going to read um, Song of Solomon, or Song of Songs, chapter 2. I really felt like the Lord was actually wanting the entire verse to be read and reflected on and to see what he was actually saying in it. And if, you, if you're if you not familiar with the Song of Solomon, it is, it, it's kind of a twofold. The... The scriptures are about a dialogue between the man and the woman, who is Solomon and one of his wives, ones that he loves, his beloved. But it, it, it technically reflects the... Um, the romance, the love that the bridegroom has for the bride of Christ. So, um, 
I'm going to read this one in the, um, let me see. Okay, I'm just going to read it in the New Living Translation. Okay. Let me just slip my marker into the page while I have to flip it. <laughs> okay. And it says, I am the spring crocus. This is the woman speaking first off. What was interesting to me when I look, when you look at the heading on the chapter two in the New King James, it says, a country girl in a palace. <laughs> Gee, that sounds like me. Guilty as charged. <laughs> so it says, young woman, um, I am the spring crocus blooming on the Sharon Plain, the lily of the valley. Young man. Like a lily among thistles is my darling among young women. Young woman. Like the finest apple tree in the orchard is my lover among other young men. I sit in his delightful shade and taste his delicious fruit. He escorts me to the banquet hall. It's obvious how much he loves me. Strengthen me with raisin cakes. Refresh me with apples. For I am weak with love. His left arm is under my head and his right arm embraces me. Promise me, O women of Jerusalem, by the gazelles and the wild deer, not to awaken love until the time is right. Ah, uh, I hear my lover coming. He is leaping over the mountains, bounding over the hills. My lover is like a swift gazelle or a young stag. Look here, he is behind the wall, looking through the window and peering into the room. My lover said to me, rise up, my darling. Come away with me, my fair one. Look. The winter is past, and the rains are over and gone. The flowers are springing up, the season of singing birds has come, and the cooing of the turtle doves fills the air. The fig trees are forming young fruit, and the fragrant grapevines are blossoming. Rise up, my darling. Come away with me, my fair one. Young man. My dove is hiding behind the rocks, behind an outcrop on the cliff. Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is pleasant. Your face is lovely. Young women of Jerusalem, catch all the little... Catch all the foxes, those little foxes, before they ruin the vineyard of love, for the grapevines are blossoming. Young woman, my lover is mine and I am his. He browses among the lilies before the dawn breezes blow and the night shadows flee. Return to me, my love, like a gazelle or a young stag on the rugged mountains. Now I'm going to read 16 and 17 in the New King James Version, okay, because of the language in it. Now the, the headings in the New King James is... Um, the man is listed as the beloved, <laughs> which, um, is very interesting because the meaning of my love's name is beloved. 
Um, and the listing for the young woman is the Shulamite. Okay, so verse 16 and 17 in the New King James Version reads, my beloved is mine, and I am his. He feeds his flock among the lilies, her beloved. Until the day breaks, the shadows flee away. Turn, my beloved, and be like a gazelle or a young stag upon the mountains of Bethar. So that was, the, the verse 16 is the scripture where uh, the month of Elul is linked to. But what I wanted to make light of here and remind you of, that when we were reading through verse 2, I mean chapter 2, <clears throat> that it was the same thing that happened in Haggai 1. There was something that he said twice. So it's important that we pay very close attention to it. He said it in verse 10 and in verse 13. Rise up, my darling. Come away with me, my fair one. That's that's similar to what David was talking about in uh, Psalm 27. Verse 8. Uh, um, I'll read verse 7 through 9, okay? In the New Living Translation. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, Come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Don't turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't. Abandon me. The Lord will hold me close. That's actually through. Um, don't turn your back on me. Don't reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me. O oh God of my salvation. And through chapter, uh, verse 10... It says, even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. And see, I paused when I read it the first time because of my apology message that I, that I had uploaded to the pages last night to my God-ordained husband about the, the issue of rejection and abandonment that I felt like he'd experienced that I learned about in those two encounters with the Lord about us. And <clears throat> when I did that video, I had not read through these scriptures yet. So, the Lord was always, He was already drawing me to that. I'm going to go back to the Song of Solomon scriptures. Okay, um, I feel like I need to keep reading in the Song of Solomon um, into chapter 3. Um, actually, let me go back to... I'm going to go back into uh, chapter 2 in the New King James. 
and then go into chapter three because I feel like the Lord is still wanting to draw more on that. And it's um, the wording in the New King James beginning around verse 8 in chapter 2. Um, there's some, it seems like that this is important for the Lord. Hmm. Okay. New King James chapter 2 verse 8. Um, the voice of my beloved. This is the Shulamite speaking. This is the woman. The voice of my beloved. Behold, he comes leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Behold, he stands behind our wall. He is looking through the windows, gazing through the lattice. My beloved spoke and said to me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing has come. The voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth her green figs. The vines with the tender grapes give a good smell. Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. O oh, dove, in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the cliff, let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. Your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Catch us the foxes. This is her brothers, it says. This is actually listed as the young women of Jerusalem. But in the New King James, it's listed as her brothers. Catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. My beloved is mine, and I am his. He feeds his flock among the lilies. That's the Shulamite speaking, the woman. And then her beloved, this is the young... Uh, no, it says to her beloved. See, when she says, my beloved is mine, and I am his, she's speaking to the women of Jerusalem. But this, she's speaking to her beloved, to the man. She says, until the day breaks and the shadows flee away, turn, my beloved, and be like a gazelle or a young stag upon the mountains of Bethar. Now, one of the other things I wanted to point out in chapter 2 before I go on to, to chapter 3. In uh, the verses 11 through 13, okay. I'm going to read this part in the New Living Translation. And it says, look. You know, this is the, this is the, um, this is listed as the young woman speaking to the young man. So she represents us if we we're representing the bride of Christ. And she says, she said that my lover said to me, rise up, my darling and come away with me, my fair one, verse 10. That the bridegroom told her this. And then she, he said, Look, the winter is past, and the rains are over and gone. The flowers are springing up, the season of singing birds has come, and the cooing of turtle doves fills the air. The fig trees are forming young fruit, and the fragrant grapevines are blossoming. Rise up, my darling, come away with me, my fair one. When I read that, that was reminding me of my child loss memoir. Because in my memoir, I set it up so that at different portions of the book, I'm speaking from a life season. 
to reflect on what I was going through, the things that were happening in that life season. Winter was reflective of the times where I was in the most trial and the most pain, the most grief. Verse 11, look, the winter is past. And then it says, and the rains are over and gone. Rains represent weeping, times of mourning. They also, you know, if you compare the things that you go through in your trials to weather and the way an agricultural season works, you know, you get Biblically, you get spring rains and you get uh, you get latter rains. Now you get early rains and you former rains and latter rains because the seasons are a little different in Jerusalem than they are, say, in America. Um, so you can you can listen within the scriptures about how the, the rainy season can reflect a time of sorrow. But if you think about what rain does in agriculture, it prepares the soil during that process of a seed dying. And the scripture specifically says that unless a seed dies, unless it's planted and dies, it cannot bring forth fruit and multiply. So when you're coming out of rainy seasons, seasons of sorrow, season, seasons of preparation for the harvest to come, for the multiplication to come, you know, when you're talking about going through those trials in life and you went through the sorrow and you went through the rainy seasons, like last year was my rainy season. And I, even some of this year has been rainy. That's what happened to my eyes. <laughs> That's why I said, don't laugh at me. You don't know the price I paid with these eyeballs. Um, but it says, and the rains are over and gone. This is what the Lord's saying in, in the month of Elul. The rains are over and gone. And so it's time, as we look forward to the new Jewish year, the new Jew, Jewish year of Rosh Hashanah, to look for the flowers are springing up. The season of singing birds has come. The cooing of the turtle doves fills the air. The fig trees are forming young fruit, and the fragrant grapevines are blossoming. Therefore, rise up, my darling. Come away with me, my fair one. So, between this time of coming out of the rain, coming out of the winter, coming out of the wilderness, the Lord is calling us away to be with Him, calling us to spending one-on-one -on -one time with him so that he can kind of get us recalibrated for the promises he's bringing forth because the seeds have been planted the rains have already watered it and the seed has already died now the only thing it can do is bring forth a harvest and multiply its fruit. So therefore, in verse 12, the flowers are springing up. The season of singing birds has come. That, that reminds me uh, again of um, the scripture that the Lord gave me as a confirmation to my 4th of July vision he gave me last year when he started telling me 
about my God-ordained husband. I went to the firework display that, that night and I saw in the firework display the outline of a blue sapphire stone, the outline of a red heart, and then the outline of another blue sapphire stone. And I knew it was a, a sign from the Lord that he was, he was confirming that he was going to do this thing that he'd shown me in the vision. And when I went looking for scriptures, and I landed on Isaiah 54. I knew exactly he was talking to me because of the things he showed me in the vision. And, um, because he'd shown me a lot about the children that were going to be accounted to my account in heaven once I leave this world. And so the beginning of Isaiah 54 was... Remember, we just, we just read in Song of Solomon the time of the singing of birds has come. Verse 1 in Isaiah 54. Sing, O childless woman. Or in the New King James. Sing, O barren. You who have never given birth break into loud and joyful song O Jerusalem you who have never been in labor for the desolate woman now has more children than the woman who lives with her husband says the Lord and see we were just talking in uh, Haggai chapter 1 Consider your ways. Why are, you, why are you paying attention to building your own house and neglecting the house of the Lord and it laying in ruins? All right. What he's telling us in Isaiah 54 here is enlarge your house. Add an addition. Spread out your home and spare no expense. For you will soon be bursting at the seams. Your descendants will occupy other nations and resettle the ruined cities. That's what me and my God-ordained husband are called to. Repairers of the breach and rebuilder of the cities that were ruined. And then forget not... You will no longer live in shame. Do not be afraid. There is no more disgrace for you. You will no longer remember the shame of your youth and the sorrows of your widowhood. For your creator will be your husband. The Lord of heaven's armies is his name. He is your redeemer. He is the Holy One of Israel and God of all the earth. For the Lord has called you back from your grief. As though you were young, as though you were a young wife abandoned by her husband. Jesus. Says your God. For a brief moment I abandon you, but with great compassion I will take you back. In a burst of anger, I turned my face away for a little while. But with everlasting love, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. I'm going to switch over to the New King James Version here. Um, starting at verse 10. It says, For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has mercy on you. O oh, you afflicted one, tossed with tempest and not comforted. Behold, I will lay your stones with colorful gems and lay your foundations with sapphires. 
I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of crystal, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught of the Lord, by the Lord. The great shall be, and great shall be the peace of your children and righteousness. You shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear. And I'm going to skip on down to verse 16 and 17 real quick. Behold, I have created the blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the spoiler to destroy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. So really, he's just reiterating that there was a time to build and a time to, to tear down. Sometimes the Lord has to tear certain things down in order to rebuild things right. So if we've been focused in, uh, focusing on building the wrong things, he's got to tear that down to teach us how to build it right. To teach us how to build it in the manner worthy of the kingdom. And he's going to rebuild us with precious stones. And it's going to be a beautiful thing. What he brings us into. I hate to cut this short, but I am a few seconds away of losing your audio. But I just wanted to put this out there. It gives a lot for reflection on in this month of Elul. So... Listen when the Lord calls on you and get away with him. Let him talk to you. See what he's saying. Write it down. Spend time with him. Reflect on it. 